Hi everyone, hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shelly and today we're talking about the books that I read this week. This week I am going to be doing my Friday reads just slightly differently. I am just going to talk about the two books that I finished rather than the um, several I'm in the middle of. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about the two books that I finished and they were both very good. Well, well, we'll talk about them. Okay, so first of all, I want to know how is your reading week going? Um, I really love the comment section uh, on, on my videos, actually on other people's videos too. I sort of I'll like peruse their comment section and see what's going on um, in their video. And so, um, so tell me, how was your reading week? How did it go? Uh, what did you read? Um, and, and how was your week in general? For me, I am feeling pretty good today and I'm oh, really kitty. grateful for that. You're a kitty? Yeah. Meow. Okay, so my little, my little three-year-old loves to be a kitty or um, he likes to be many things. Very, some that exist in this world and some that do not. Okay, so the, I'm gonna go with the one that I enjoyed the least. And that would be uh, A Bad Beginning, A Series of Unfortunate Events. I did not enjoy this book, like, at all. Um, I finished it in a day or so. Um, <clears throat> I know it's so controversial because these books uh, hold a very, um, they're, they're held uh, in high regard in, in many people's hearts. And so I feel kind of strange saying that I didn't like it. Part of it was that I had uh, watched the show on Netflix and so I knew exactly how the book was going to play out and so there wasn't a lot of uh, surprise in the book itself. And then a technique that the author uses, um, Lemony Snicket, but I know that that's a pen name, I forget his, his real name, um, but he does this thing where he says, um, uh, the, the parents gave them, the children, permission to take a rickety trolley, and then he puts a dash and he says the word rickety, you probably know, means, um, here means unsteady or likely to collapse. And I thought that that was, when I, when I picked up this book and then didn't finish it a few years back, um, I didn't really think, I thought that technique was clever for children. But I have now sort of developed my idea for children's books that I believe that they should be read uh, and enjoyed at all ages, that the, you know, uh, the author should be thinking just beyond the target audience. Um, and I really disliked that because I've taught many, many smart children that would know all of the words that this author defined. Um, I hope that he drops that technique in further books, but I don't really want to read anything else. Um, I don't want to continue with the series. Um, and because the story wasn't surprising to me, that technique, I felt very jarring because a lot of times, um, actually every time he defined a word, I knew what it meant and it aggravated me that he would assume that I that the readers wouldn't know that word because again I children are very very smart and they figure things out and so yeah I, I just um, didn't feel great about this book okay now let's get to the book that I loved I really went off um, off my list here um, one sec. Okay, so I really went off list here this was not on my TBR um, I with this book y'all our beloved Steve Donahue, he had a conversation with another book reviewer named Sam Sachs, and they had talked about one of the best books that was written um, in, you know, the last, in the, in the 21st century, um, or in the, in the last, you know, 20 years or so, more modern books. They were talking about really good modern books, and this book came up, An Unnecessary Woman by, um, uh, Robbie Alamande, um, Alamende. So I, you know, they both praised the book. Um, they actually said the climax, which I'm not going to do. Um, and I would, you know, if you're going to read this, maybe, maybe you don't, but actually it didn't matter. They talked about the climax. They didn't talk about the way the climax played out in the book, but they, they spoiled, spoiled the climax for me. And it really didn't matter because this book was so fantastic. So this book is about, um, it follows the, uh, this, it follows one second. I wanted to both check that the camera was working and gather my thoughts before I, before I move forward. I got stuck for a second. Okay, so An Unnecessary Woman is about Aaliyah, who is a 72-year-old woman living in Beirut, which is the capital of Le Lebanon. Um, it 
she is pretty she lives in solitude mostly she she doesn't really talk with a lot of people we follow her um, in the course of a couple of days and in those couple of days uh, we get the reader gets her her life story um, and the the peaks in the, the valleys of her life as a woman um, living in Beirut and what here's what was interesting about this book is that everything about the story uh, when if I were if you were to have sold the premise to me or tried to sell the premise to me I wouldn't have wanted to read this book um, it first the protagonist is a 70 72 year old woman which I probably you know I really love buildings Romans I like books that surround sort of young protagonists um, and, and so that would have uh, not piqued my interest um, she is living in Beirut I would have not really thought too much about that um, and she's a she's a translator, which is probably one of the more interesting aspects of the story. However, it doesn't matter because uh, Alamende is a fantastic writer. I mean, really, really engaging. So Aaliyah, our main character, she um, the very beginning of the of the story, she talks about how she translates one book per year, and at that point, she's translated about twenty seven um, books, and she can read uh, French and English and she uses um, the French and English versions of a book like Anna Karenina and she translates translates that into Arabic she doesn't sell her translations this is not work that she gets paid for it is the work that she does because she loves it um, and because that this is literature is her life she often sees the world and filters the world through literature so as she's talking about her experiences in life she's connecting them with literature that she's read um, and she often filters her feelings through a character that she's read in a book or um, or an author that she admires and that is extremely interesting and extremely engaging many of the books that she references I am not super familiar with and that doesn't even matter either because because she is talking about her feelings or why she um, associates with that or she chooses um, well the, the author of the book chooses a, a very specific quote that will resonate with the feeling and, and explain that um, and explain her feelings or um, her situation in a way that makes a lot of sense so um, she I mean she uh, if you love literature, you will love this book. Um, and in the matter of the first 50 pages, there is probably 25 references to authors and books and um, the literary canon. Um, I mean, if not, if not more, I mean, it's just jam packed full of of literary references, and they all work. They're it's just a stunning read. Um, and I, I will say this, um, and this is, I don't believe it's a spoiler, but the title is An, Un An Unnecessary Woman, which is um, not really pointing to anything specific. I mean, it's not even the unnecessary woman, you know, which would be a very specific person or a specific woman who is, would be found unnecessary. It is an unnecessary woman, which means that it could be one of many. Um, and <clears throat> Um, we were watching the news one night and it hit me that all of the stories that she's sharing um, reinforce this idea that she is unnecessary. Um, and I was wa we were watching the news, we were watching what was going on in Afghanistan and all of the women protesting for their rights and the changes that are going to be upcoming in their country and, um, and, and so these women were protesting and it hit me and I was like, oh, uh, oh, Aaliyah is unnecessary and she's told that uh, through her family members and through um, her position in the country as, as a woman um, in in Beirut in um, Lebanon and um, and I started crying I started crying because I said that Aaliyah is necessary to me to me the reader she mattered and um, and I wanted to tell her like I wanted to, to tell her in the book that she mattered um, and that was a really stunning moment this week. It, it really stretched my heart in a way 
that I didn't expect and it wasn't even while I was reading the book that it hit me it was while I was watching the news um, and my, my little everyone my husband and my sons all gave me a hug and I was like I, I want her to know that she matters to me she's necessary to me so yeah anyways a, a fantastic book um, I would highly recommend it to those who really 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 love uh, literature which is everybody here on booktube and um, the story is amazing uh, the writing is fantastic and again the climax was spoiled but it didn't even matter because as it happened it took my breath away still it's it still the um, it still was able to just shock me and I love this book I love this book it was just just a fantastic read and that is it <laughs> Um, yeah, one sec. Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, I wanted to just thank you all for being here and joining me on this Friday Reads. Um, please let me know what you read. Did you have a fantastic experience like I did with um, Alamende's uh, book? I, I want to read everything that this author wrote now at this point. Um, and I know that Steve Donahue just got a, the, his new book in the mail, and I'm very curious as to how that will rank at the end of the year list that Steve Donahue will, uh, put out, or if it will even make it on the list. Um, yeah, okay, that's it. <laughs> Can I get through a video without talking about Steve Donahue? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank you all for watching. Um, I look forward to your comments below and have a wonderful, wonderful day and a, just, a, just a wonderful weekend. Um, I will see you on my next one. Bye guys.